Let's take a look at some basic features of qualitative and quantitative research designs. To keep this video short and the example concrete, I will be using the same example for both research designs or research approaches. And the example is here. Every year, Talous Elama publishes the list of 500 largest companies. And in 2005, they published the list and then they did analysis uh, where they compared men and women-led companies and concluded that the return on assets of the women-led companies was 4.7 percentage points higher than for the men-led companies. And this is a big, huge difference because the average ROA is like a bit more than 10 percent in the sample. And uh, of course, when we see this kind of large difference between women-led companies, the obvious question is, is this a gender effect? So does naming a woman as a CEO cause your profitability to go up? Or is the CEO gender the underlying cause of these differences? And this is not just one observation. Similar results have been reported elsewhere. This is a report from McKinsey and they say that, um, well, you can draw a, a cause of conclusion based on a correlation only. So the difference might be for some other reasons. But whenever people see this kind of differences between men and women at companies, they tend to uh, say that, yes, this means that we should have more women on boards. And uh, because having, knowing whether it's the, a gender effect or whether it's something else has big policy implications. If this is just uh, a spurious correlation caused by something else, then uh, naming women, more women as CEOs would not be a good policy decision, but if it's actually that women are so much better leaders than men, then we should immediately start hiring more women as CEOs. So we need to understand why there is a difference and there might be different explanations. For example, it might be that the women are actually better leaders and because they're better leaders in the first example here, they uh, produce better top management team performance, which increases firm performance. But it's also possible that they, there is a difference between men and women at companies that is because of a third factor. And this is something that a quantitative researcher would be thinking about. And uh, maybe it is that smaller firms are more profitable, smaller firms are more likely to be women-led, and, and that's the reason why women-led companies are more profitable. It's not a gender effect, but just that the women-led companies are different than the men-led companies. Or it might be because of industry differences. For example, in mining, which is very asset heavy, the return on assets is lower than, for example, consulting, which is asset light. And it might be that there are more CEOs, women CEOs in consulting than in mining, for example. And then it will be an industry difference, not a CEO gender effect. Or it might be a, a discrimination or a reverse causality effect. It might be that those companies who are doing well say we're doing well, we might as well hire a woman CEO. Or it might be a discrimination case. So it might be that it is so hard for a woman to be a CEO of a major corporation in Finland that to be a woman in that position you have to be a lot better than any men who applied to that position. So that would be the fifth argument. This is a result of discrimination. So the women are vetted much more than the men. So average woman is better for that reason, but not a gender thing. So a quantitative researcher would think which alternative explanations we would have to rule out and possibly what additional data we would call, need to collect. So typically when we just observe a correlation, then we can't make a claim that one variable is a cause of, of another, but we need to conduct a study. In quantitative research, when we want to understand causality, if naming a woman as a CEO causes the profitability to increase, we have three conditions that we need to demonstrate. First is association. So is there a correlation between profits and gender? In this case, the answer is yes. And the next question is, which one comes first? Is it uh, the, the gender co the differences cause is profit differences or is it that the profit differences cause gender differences? And the third is elimination of rival explanation. So maybe this is an industry effect, maybe this is a company size effect and not the gender effect. Uh, there's a very simple strategy for, for observe, eliminating the directional influence and it is measuring the cause before the effect. So if we want to understand whether the CEO makes a difference, then we need to check 
when there is a new CEO and then what is the performance of the company one, two or three years after the new CEO was hired. So we need to delay the measurement of the dependent variable. This is a fairly common strategy in high quality quantitative studies. And then for elimination of rival explanations, uh, let's say we want to eliminate the size effect. So we want to say that this is not due to the women running smaller companies and the sm smaller companies being more profitable. We have two strategies. We have the experiment, which is the ideal. And the idea of experiment is that we randomly assign companies into two conditions. One receives the treatment, other one doesn't, and then we compare the outcome. So we have random assignment and experimental manipulation. That's of course not feasible in when studying companies and the CEOs, but there are some company level experiments in strategic management. Then the second and more common approach in quantitative study is that we try to construct some kind of statistical model that takes all these alternative explanations into account and we would do that with control variables. So let's take a look at how experiment works. The experiment is the simplest possible quantitative research strategy and it basically works like as, as follows. So you have your population of interest or your sample and then you randomly divide that sample into two. Uh, one receives the treatment and other one doesn't. So let's say that the treatment group receives the tre treatment. These companies are assigned uh, to a, a women CEO and then the other uh, rest of the companies are controlled. They are assigned to a man CEO. So we would randomly shuffle the companies and shuffle the CEOs according to this rule. Then we would measure the outcome sometime after and if there is a difference between the outcomes, let's say profitability, if the treatment group is more profitable than the control group, then we would conclude that because of randomization, these companies are exact, these two groups are statistically exactly comparable and therefore the only reason why there would be a difference is because of the, of the treatment. This experimental strategy is very commonly applied in, for example, medical research. So you would uh, have half of your patients to get the, the medication, other half would get the placebo, and then you follow their health for weeks, months, or years to see if there's any difference. Randomization works when your sample size is large enough. Importantly, in experiments, we want to know that the difference after the experiment is because of the treatment, not because of how we assigned these companies into our treatment and control group. If companies get to choose who the CEOs are, then it might be that certain kind of companies that would be more profitable anyway would hire a woman CEO and then certain companies that would be less profitable anyway would hire a men's CEO. So we don't know whether the difference in men and women at companies is actually because of the CEO, the treatment defect, or because of selection, or how they hire the CEO. Uh, taking this to the medicine example, if we allow people to choose whether they go for an experimental medication or for a placebo, the control group, then those people who are more sick, who are more, whose life is more at risk, for example, might opt more be more likely to go for an experimental treatment than to control. And uh, then any difference after the treatment wouldn't reflect the effect of the treatment, but the pre-existing differences between the two groups. So this is the experiment. It's very commonly used in uh, organizational behavior research, for example, less common in strategy or entrepreneurship. But there are some studies in strategy and entrepreneurship as well where experiments are used. The more common strategy is statistical controls. So the idea of statistical control is that, let's say that we have this, the firm, this is the, the performance and CEO gender are correlated so that male-led companies, the average ROA is 14.1, for women-led companies it's 18.5, and that is the, the comparison without control from anything. And in this example, I just control for size. Normally you would control for many other variables. So one very easy strategy control for size would be to, for example, observe that most of the women-led companies are less than 250 employees and there are very few women-led companies with more than 250 employees. And we would make a more fair comparison by sampling 
only smaller companies, only compare, leave out all large companies with more than 250 people and then do the comparison. So for, for firms less than 250 people, we would have male-led companies 18.1, women-led companies 19.5, and these are just made up numbers. So the idea is to make the uh, groups more comparable using sampling. This sampling strategy is very easy to understand. Just uh, make the, uh, the two groups more comparable by matching on one, one dimension. But it gets very cumbersome and next to impossible if you need to uh, do it for like five or ten variables. So in practice, uh, how we do controlling is that we think really hard what kind of alternate explanations we might have for the difference between men and women at companies like uh, industry, uh, size, maybe our discrimination of, of CEOs. And then we would construct a statistical model and then the statistical model would do the controlling for us. I will not explain statistical model in, in this video because it, uh, it's a bit beyond the scope of the basics. Okay, so in quantitative research we either do experiments or we do controlling either with the statistical model or through, through sampling and the, the, the purpose of controlling is to identify control variables and then eliminate their influence from the observed associates. So how about qualitative research? How would a qualitative researcher uh, address this same problem? Does naming a, C a woman as a CEO cause profitability differences? A qualitative researcher would criticize the quantitative researcher that the, the three rules that the quantitative researcher is following have no causal process in there. So where's the causal process in these, these three rules that the quantitative researcher is so obsessed about? And then the, the qualitative researchers would go and argue causality by describing the causal process. So the qualitative researcher, for example, if you were doing an inductive multiple case study, you might study four women-led companies, four men-led companies over a longer period of time and then compare how do the men and women-led companies differ? How does the men and women, how, do, how does the men CEO and women CEO, how do they differ in how they run their companies? And you would observe then perhaps for a longer period of time, maybe you would uh, go and, and observe within the company or maybe you would do interviews over time and try to understand like what makes these companies differ different what is is there something that women let women see us do differently and then uh, you would argue the causal process by describing what exactly there is how women make the difference so you would basically say in a qualitative uh, research that i went to these cases I saw that this is what happened and therefore the women are the cause of the profitability differences. So the main difference in qualitative and quantitative research strategies are that a quantitative researcher is pretty far from the actual phenomenon, just trying to look it through the numbers and try to get a larger sample size and uh, then applying statistics to rule out alternative explanations. A qualitative researcher goes and tries to get close to the close to a few cases and explain the process. The upside of quantitative research is it allows in, in some ways more generalizable and more rigorous tests, but then you're pretty far from the quality uh, from the causal process and you need lots of assumptions behind your analysis. In contrast, in qualitative research, uh, uh, you can be pretty sure that you have described the causal process correctly but the challenge is that if you study just four women-led companies are you, how, how sure can you be that it generalizes to all women-led companies? 